Hello, fellow diamond painting addicts, and welcome back to Diamond Painting Anonymous. I'm Daphne, and I'm here today to share with you my July goals update and give you a little recap on how I did in the month of July and how things are going for me so far this year. I normally do these as kind of a whip and chat. The last couple ones I think I've actually combined with a whip and chat, but this week I'm actually going to be doing a separate video for that but in the style of a whip and chat. So if you wanna go grab something and work along while I share all of my goals and updates, I'm also gonna be working. I'm still working on my Gamer Girl from DIY Moon. It's coming along really nicely. It's actually kind of a, a change from the Christmas gnomes that I finished because that one had quite a bit of multi-placing. This one is a lot of confetti so far. And while I know there's gonna be places where I have some multi-placing, I think most of it's gonna be pretty confetti heavy. So I'm just gonna take the opportunity to work on this and get some work done while I'm also sharing some stuff with you. So if you guys wanna go grab something to work on and work alongside while I share, or you can just listen. Either way is good with me. Okay, let me change things around a bit, get zoomed into where I'm gonna be working, and I'll be right back with all my updates. Don't go anywhere. Okay guys, I think I'm just gonna jump in with my diamond painting hours. That's my first goal. You know, I want to get to a thousand hours each year. I'd like to do more than that, but a thousand seems to be doable. This month, I managed to finish some pretty big projects, one of which was my heaven and earth design. And, you know, technically some of these hours are from last year, but they didn't get counted last year because I hadn't finished the project. So they're getting counted this year. So between that, the gnomes, and a couple of other small projects that I finished, I managed to do 128 hours and 28 minutes of diamond painting. So yay, I think this is the first month all year that I've gotten over 100 hours. So that's awesome. I am well on my way to my thousand hour goal. Previously, last month, I was at 445 hours and 28 minutes. So if you add my 128, 28 from this month to that, that means I'm currently sitting at a, an overall total of 573 hours and 56 minutes, which means I'm over halfway almost basically uh, three fourths of the way to 600 hours. So hopefully, because I do have some other quite large projects planned, I don't think anything that's gonna take me as many hours as the heaven and earth, but you never know. Uh, I have been trying to estimate how long I think diamond paintings will take me. And sometimes I get close, sometimes I don't. I try to figure on release paper sections because that just gives me a good gauge. You know, I, I know how big each release paper is. I know approximately how long it takes me to finish each release paper section, depending on whether or not it's a confetti heavy canvas or whether it's got quite a bit of multi-placing. However, it can, I can be wrong. For instance, with my gnomes, I thought they were gonna take me around 44 hours they actually took me way less than that because there was so much multi-placing, it only took me about 35 hours. For this particular kit, I, I haven't estimated it yet, but I, I know my estimate will be off because there's just so much confetti in this one that I know even though it's around, that it's going to make a difference. And I just realized, I don't think that's something that I took into consideration when I was figuring my time was whether or not it's squares or rounds, because obviously squares go much slower than rounds. Just because they're also smaller drills, it takes more time to place all of them and fill up. There are more of them to fill up the same amount of space. So I need to go back and refigure that. Maybe eventually after a couple of years, I'll get to where I've got a good, a good handle on how much it will take me to do everything, but we'll see. So 573 hours and 56 minutes, I'm not mad about that at all. I, there for a couple of months, I thought, oh man, I'm not even going to make a thousand hours this year, but I think I will. I am doing a lot of bigger than usual projects this year. You know, last year I spent an entire month doing nothing but 30 by 30 paintings. And while I had a lot of fun and I do enjoy the smaller paintings, 
I am actually enjoying the dent that I'm making in my stash. Plus, I'm just getting to do a lot of really cool images that have just been hanging around forever and I haven't gotten to, and now I'm getting to them, so it's all good. Okay, my second goal for this year was to do 50 finishes. And like I said, last year, I think I finished 70 plus different kits, but a lot of those were smaller ones because I'm working on larger paintings this year. I dropped that down to 50 finishes. I finished four things this month, two pretty big ones and two small ones, which means that I added in, well, I had 33 done up to this point. So add four to that and I'm sitting at 37. So I'm over the halfway mark and well on my way. So I, I think I can get 50 done, even though I'm working on these larger paintings. It'll, it'll be fun to see if I can get there or not. So that was goal number two. Goal number three is my artist series. And this actually seemed like kind of an ambitious goal when I was doing it at the beginning of the year. I'm actually having more fun with it than I thought I would. I mean, the point of it was to do kits by artists that I'd never done any of their artwork before, but also to, you know, reduce my stash because I have so many pieces of art sitting there that I've just not done. And they're really amazing pieces of art. I just haven't gotten around to them. I'm kind of kicking myself on some of them that I haven't because I've thoroughly enjoyed them and wish I would have gotten to them sooner. But also it has let me do a couple of pieces of artwork that I've kind of gone, hmm, you know what? I don't think I'll buy any more from this particular artist. I've enjoyed all the ones that I've done, but yeah, I think I just have discovered, you know, ones that I thought I wouldn't like, I did, and ones that I thought I would like, I didn't like as much as I thought I would. For instance, my Mandy Manzano, when I did the Elizabeth one, really loved the art, the image, but I just wasn't sure about all of the black. I think the Hannah Lynn with all the black that I did a couple years ago just kind of turned me off of that. But after doing the Elizabeth and now the Gnomes, I think I really enjoy that art style more than I thought I would. And so I'm kind of having to when I see new paintings that are out there, I kind of have to stop and think. You know, my initial gut reaction might be, oh, I don't think I would like that one, but then I need to stop and think about it. Well, would I? Because I didn't think I would like, you know, this one or that one, and I did enjoy those. And then there have been a couple that, though I really like the image, I just didn't enjoy the painting. So yeah, just, just trying to be cognizant of that. So artist series, I finished two more this month. I'm counting my heaven and earth design as one of those, even though it was not on my original list because it was huge and I've never done a painting by that artist before, so it counts. And then I added my gnome trio, which was on my original list. So I think I'm running about half and half for my finishes. Half of my finishes for my artist series this year have been ones that were on my original to-do list. And probably about half of them are ones that I ended up doing for other reasons and ended up counting them. But it's all good, right? The whole point was to kind of broaden my horizons too and try some art that I haven't done before. And, and I'm doing that, so that's been good. So I added two this month. I had 10, which means I'm at 12, which means I'm over the halfway point, which is good because I don't know if I'll manage two a month the whole year. If I manage two a month the whole year, then I'd be done by October, but I don't know if I'm going to do that. I don't even know if I did that. I think I've done it every month so far. No, I haven't because that's seven months. So I'd be at 14 and I'm only at 12. So a couple of months already where I've done one. Ooh, so I guess I have to try and do two a month. Well, we'll see. Some of the ones that I have are not huge. So maybe I could get them done. Or maybe I'll just by the end of the year, I'll be looking for ones that are... <laughs> more multi-placing than confetti so I can get them done quicker. Quicker. It was a goal. If I don't make it, that's okay, but I, th I think I'm on track for that one. All right, my next goal is my budget. And this is one that I've 
oh, I struggle with this one. I made myself a budget the last couple of years because my first year diamond painting, I just bought all the things. I didn't really pay any attention to how much money I was spending. And I spent way more than I would have guessed. And I felt really guilty about it. I personally felt guilty about it. My husband did not care. Nobody in my house went without anything because of my diamond painting addiction. But I was just kind of, ooh, you know, we have other things that we would like to spend our money on. Not that I mind spending money on diamond painting, but I just don't want to get that carried away again. And so the last couple of years, I've set myself a budget. However, because I am so competitive with myself, especially, I think my budget has been more constraining than anything else. And so I find myself, oh, well, I'm not going to spend anything this year. Last year, I went over budget because I made the budget too constrictive. And this year, I, I doubled my budget. So my budget for the year was $2,400, which may sound like a ridiculous amount to some people. But because of the YouTube channel and other things, you know, I felt like when it was only $1,200 in 2021, or 2022 that I didn't I didn't buy things that I wanted to because I was trying to stay under budget and it just got to be too constraining so I figured this year I would double it so I did but I'm finding with it doubled instead of going over constantly I have just kind of not spent anything for a couple of months and July was shaping up to be kind of the same way I got to like the 28th or 29th of July and I hadn't really spent anything I had bought a couple of tools spent maybe 40 50 dollars if that then I saw a couple of diamond paintings that I wanted to get a new place that I wanted to try and I was like well I'll just wait until August I'm only a couple of days away from August and then I can say, you know, oh, I only spent this in July and I'll have that budget left in August. And then I thought, why am I doing this? You know, the budget is there because I thought that was a reasonable amount for me to spend. So why am I constantly nickel and diming myself, right? And I get that not everybody has a ton of money to spend on diamond painting. I do. If, you know, we were not in the financial situation we we are now, I wouldn't be spending the money that I do either. You know, back when my daughter was in college and we were paying tuition for two kids, yeah, I was not spending a ton of money on diamond painting. It was getting saved up for tuition and books and other things. And he finally said, you know, it's like, why are you waiting? Just go ahead and buy it. Like we have the money, it doesn't hurt anything, who cares? His, his attitude is if it's going to make me happy, then he's cool with it. As long as, again, you know, I'm not taking money away from something else. Like all our bills are being paid and all of that kind of stuff. So as long as that's all good, he could care less. So yeah, I finally just decided, you know what? I'm not going to wait those next couple of days. I'm going to go ahead and do it. I'm going to order the paintings that I wanted. One of them is from a place I've never bought from before. So when I get the painting, I'll be sharing that with you guys. Then I had a couple of paintings from, there was one particular one from Oraloa that I wanted to get. Guys, they're killing me with the free shipping. Not just Oraloa, but all of them, that it's like, oh, we'll get free shipping if you spend over X dollar amount. And I know it's a sucker thing, but I fall for it every time. And so I was like, well, let me just find another kit that I want. And I had seen one coming out that was one of their new releases that I was like, oh, I really like that one. Let me see what this one is going to look like. So I ended up buying two kits from Oraloa that should be on their way. And then so many of you have been talking about Diamond Art Club and their new tips. Now, when Diamond Art Club first came out with their still tips, I didn't buy any because... I, the way they looked, I had tried ones similar to those before for single placers and I didn't like them, so I didn't get them. And honestly, when they came out with their multi-placers, I thought they looked a little weird. Like they look like they would break because they've got that little kind of thin piece 
in between, you know, it's not like a thick base. Like on this multi-placer, it's not like a thick base like this. There's like a little, there's like a, a piece like this and then a skinny piece. And I'm like, I'm a really heavy placer and I'm afraid I would break it. No, it's supposed to be a steel tip, so it shouldn't break, but I'm a pretty heavy placer. So, you know, I don't, I guess we'll see. Anyway, I ordered one. I went to go order two. They were both out of stock. I got an email that one was back in stock. I wasn't going to order it because I thought, well, I'll wait until they're both back in stock and then I'll just get them both at the same time. But you never know with Diamond Art Club if something is going to continue to be available. I wasn't sure that the one I wanted would still be available. So I was talking to my husband about it again and I, we both just kind of said at the same time, just go ahead and get it. Again, the shipping, you know, it's irritating to have to pay $10 in shipping for such a small item. But what I did was I used my points to basically take off the cost of the shipping. So I was just paying for the item, which again is annoying, but at least I had the points and I was able to do that. And I'll probably do the same thing when the other tip that I want comes in stock. If I like the first one is a caveat. I, I haven't gotten the other one yet. So once I get it and I try it out, I'll share my thoughts. Like I said, so many of you have said you guys just absolutely love it. I'm like, well, let me just try it. Appearances can be deceiving, so maybe I'll like it more than I think. So for the month of July, even though I thought I was only going to spend about 50 some dollars, I actually ended up spending $264.39. And and of that 264.39, I ended up spending 74.96 of it on tool kits and not tool kits on tools. I bought the tip. I bought a couple of other things that I'm not going to share with you because you guys will be seeing them. I'm still waiting on one of them to arrive. So I was going to unbox them both at the same time, but I'm still waiting on the second item to get here. So tools, $74.96, and then the other $189.43 I spent on the three kits that I purchased. And like I said, I kind of went round and round with myself about should I buy these, should I just wait, and I just went ahead and pulled the trigger. So $264.39 spent in July, which means of my $2,400 budget, I now have $1,329.10, so $1,329.10 left of my original $2,400 budget. I don't know if I'll buy a lot of things in August. We'll see. You know, I never, I don't ever have plans to spend a certain dollar amount. I mean, I have the budget there, $2,400 for the year, so I figured, you know, Roughly $200 a month. If I stayed in that, I would stay in budget. Some months I have gone over, like this month. Some months I've gone under. Some months under by quite a bit. I do want to have, you know, a nice amount there for Black Friday and Cyber Monday when those kind of sales rolls around because I know there's going to be a ton of kits that get released. If I go over, I go over. It's not the end of the world, right? Again, I'm trying to make remember in my head that, you know, these are just goals I set for myself. If I make them great, if I don't, it's okay. If I miss them, that's okay. It's not the end of the world. It's just a goal I set for myself. I can either try it again next year or I can decide, you know, that isn't a goal that works for me. I'm going to focus on something else. I'm actually have already been working on what goals I want to do for 2024. And yeah, there's definitely going to be some things that I change up for 2024. So, all right. My final goal for this year was to reduce my stash. How am I doing on that? Well, <laughs> again, if I stopped buying things, I probably would be doing okay. I did three things out of my stash. I did my heaven and earth design. I did the Christmas gnomes. And I did my beach Santa. Those were all things that were in my stash. So I finished three things out of my stash. 
However, right there at the end of the month, I ended up buying three diamond paintings, one from the new place and two from Oraloa. Part of the reason my stash grows fast too is because I often get sent PR kits, which I don't normally send, I don't normally count those in my stash unless it's a kit that I'm gonna pull out and save and do for myself. Because a lot of my PR stuff, I end up gifting on to other people, either in my random acts of kindness or I'll use them during giveaways or whatever, if it's just something that I don't think I'm gonna get to or something that's not necessarily my style. So I get kits that way, some I count, some I don't. But yeah, I'm sitting at kind of a net zero for this month because I finished three things, but I bought three kits. So yeah, didn't do as well as I had hoped, but that's okay. You know, overall, if the numbers go down rather than going up, then I'm okay with that. I keep thinking at some point I might do a detox kind of thing with my stash like Lizette has been doing over at Lizette Crafts and Tells, but I have gotten rid of so many things out of my stash that I kind of bought just, you know, again with the free shipping, me trying to find something, oh, I'm gonna stick this in my cart so I can get my free shipping. Even though it's not a kit that I'm necessarily in love with, it's one I can do, it gets me free shipping. So yeah, I throw it in my cart. And then after it's set in my stash for, you know, five or six months, I'm like, you know what, I'm never gonna get to this. But I would like to get my stash down to a more workable amount because, well, again, just because I feel guilty about it sometimes and everyone tells me that I shouldn't. So maybe that's something I need to just work on is just not feeling as guilty. Now, you guys, I think I'm done with all of the bees in this section, but I would swear I dropped a drill and I would think it went somewhere that it wasn't supposed to go, but they all look like I placed them. I don't see one that's just kind of laying in a random spot, so. Maybe I got lucky and it fell where it was supposed to. I don't know. <laughs> well, so the last thing that I want to talk about is my random acts of kindness, which are not really a goal. I didn't make them a specific goal. Last year, they were a specific goal. This year, they are just, you know, something I, I keep track of, but it's, you know, it's not really a goal. I sent out eight more random acts of kindness in July. I actually have been thinking I need to start sending out some more. I've got a stack of things I could have sent out and ready to go. I just haven't done it yet. So that'll be on my to-do list for August. So if you've signed up for a random act of kindness and haven't gotten it, don't panic. I still have the list. It's still out there. I'm slowly working my way through it. Although I'm, I'm currently, I think I'm through May, April or May of this year. So yeah have sent out 67 so far this year in counting. I think last year I got to 100. I don't know if I'll get to 100 this year just because I've not been sending out as many. Okay, so that's all kind of my goals. While I'm finishing up this one color, I did wanna give you guys some additional information. Uh, one, just a big thank you to everybody. I ran a survey Oh, it's been a couple months ago now, I think. I put it up on my YouTube channel. I put it up on Facebook so that people could see it. A lot of you responded. I had a, a, some great response from people. So thank you to everyone who participated in that and answered the questions on the survey. I am in the process of kind of collating all of the responses and kind of making sense of all of the data that you guys provided and figuring out how I want to present all of that. I kind of want to make it in really pretty graphs to give to you guys rather than just kind of throwing a bunch of numbers at you. But I haven't really looked at yet what, what that would look like. I mean, I just kind of sat down the other day and went through all of the responses to see what all of the responses look like. So you guys will be seeing the results from the survey hopefully pretty soon. And again, thank you to everybody who responded. It was actually some interesting things that I learned. So I'll be sharing those with you. And then you guys, I bought a frame for my Christmas gnomes and it didn't fit. 
This is why I don't buy frames that have mats because the mat was not the size that they said. It was actually smaller and it never works when you try to cut frames no matter how careful you are cutting the mat, something always goes wrong. And the dimensions of the frame itself were too large for the painting. So I couldn't put it in without one, a mat either. I may ask my brother-in-law to make a mat for me, but I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna save that frame for something else. And I'm actually going to order a custom sized framed from Frame It Easy for the gnomes because the frame that I bought with the mat was actually black. And it was one that I bought on Amazon and I actually wanted it to be a different color. And I found one on Frame It Easy. It's a little more expensive, but I can get it in the color I want. I think it'll look really good. I can size it so it'll be the way that I want. And so I think that's what I'm gonna do. Okay, let me zoom out here so you guys can see what I've done. I'm working on, this is the keyboard that's at her feet. So it's a lot of confetti because it's supposed to look like little keys, but I'm happy with the progress I made. Still wondering about where that drill went that I dropped, but whatever. I think that's it for me today, guys. So thanks so much for joining me. Thanks for sticking around till the end of the video. Let me know in the comments, did you set any goals for yourself this year? If you did, how are you doing on them? And how do you think I did? Do you think I'm on track? Do you think I'm gonna meet mine? Or do you think I need to step it up in a couple of areas? Let me know that as well. Before you leave guys, don't forget to do all the things. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already and hit that bell notification icon so that you can be informed of future uploads. And as always guys, thanks so much for watching.